We have been playing this uh, CD for quite a while. It's a, it's a great CD. It's called Live and Unplugged to Benefit the Purple Rose Theater, featuring singer, songwriter, and uh, producer and playwright, Mr. Jeff Daniels. And uh, it's a true honor to have uh, Jeff Daniels on the upper room. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, good to be here, Joe. So uh, you, you're really busy. I'm looking at your itinerary. You're doing as many shows uh, this winter as, as a regular uh, rock star performer. What, what's what been going on in preparation for this next stint of uh, shows? Um, For the Purple Rose shows? Yeah, the Purple Rose shows, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a it's an unusual problem for me because I'm I've got the CD out and and people are going to want to hear uh, certain songs off the CD. So, you know, I've got like 35, 40 songs that I that are not on the CD that you know easily another 15 that I could play and could easily do a show of all new material. Which I'll probably over the 10 shows drop in all of those songs at various points. And uh, but it's fun. It's you know I mean John Hyatt. He's a guy that, I mean, he will walk out with a song list of 75 songs that he can play. And depending on how he feels and what the crowd's like, and like he'll just go down the list and kind of go, all right, I'll do that one. So, I don't know, maybe it'll be that this time. So, you have uh, cameras rolling and tape rolling for possible further release? We'll have tape rolling. We've had tape rolling uh, all four of the past years, and we'll roll tape on every show and... Uh, we we have about 25 to 30 songs that we've recorded live in various places. Purple Rose last year, and also um, Birdland and Joe's Pub in New York, and uh, Ram's Head down in Annapolis. We recorded those shows, and so we've got we've got plenty of material. We'll probably do something, put out a second CD by the fall of next year. Well, our listeners, right now they can go to jeffdaniels.com for. Uh getting jeff cd and it's all available on internet websites as well itunes cd baby in uh, your local borders and and other outlets and uh, also uh you're up on itunes as well you, you've been doing a lot of uh traveling around and promoting the record which is, which is good you know people see the album out and they maybe say they didn't know you were performing this song but you've been performing just about 30 years or so right yeah, quietly, just been playing, just for my own enjoyment, self-taught, you know, got all the stuff in Grossman books, and, you know, Kev Moe, and all those guys, you know, I just really, you know, studied it, especially Delta Blues, and all of that, and uh, I've just done it, and written songs, basically, for my own kind of notebook, just to throw it in there, it's kind of like a musical diary, and about four, four or five years ago, in order to raise more money, the theater said, why don't you go out on stage with your guitar and see if we can charge money for people to, you know, come and see you. And I was like, well, okay. You know, I mean, when you're raising money for a nonprofit, you'll do anything. So it worked. And they came, and once I got through the first year and discovered just how naked you are out there with just an acoustic guitar and your own material, I understood what it was and now have turned it into this show that's on the CD, which is very entertaining, very funny, and uh, at times even moving. That That's interesting to say how naked it could be on stage. I, I was reading a quote from Prince. He did an acoustic set in his last tour, and he said, you can't be up there uh, thinking about your grocery list the next day. you got to be really focused and everything with the audience. Yeah, you, you've got to be there. And you know what helped, to be honest, was Broadway. You know, as an actor, to be on stage eight times a week on Broadway or off Broadway and where you're doing the show over and over and over and over you start to learn where the jokes are where the, you know where it's strong where it's weak and and, and it's just it was a great eh, kind of introduction to you know the musical show you know with the acoustic guitar and it kind of it, at least it wasn't completely foreign to me but you're definitely you know uh, when you go into the guitar solo there's no band to look to that's for sure <laughs> so so our, our listeners right now we're talking with Jeff Daniels and uh, the CD which is entitled live and unplugged to benefit the Purple Rose theater um, all the proceeds going back into the theater right yeah, all the proceeds from the CD go to the Purple Rose Theater Company, which is, uh, we've sold uh, through the website, jeffdaniels.com and uh, iTunes, etc. We've sold about 12,000 CDs, which is pretty good for an independent release. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, people out in the uh, Midwest can uh, go out to Chelsea, Michigan, um, December 20th through the 31st. 
Uh, Ten shows Jeff will be performing at the Purple Rose Theater, 137 Park Street, Chelsea, Michigan. Ticket information 734-433-7673. And then uh, moving ahead, January 2nd, you're out in Colorado at the Sheridan Opera House. And uh, do you pronounce it Telluride? Yeah, tell you right, I believe. Tell you right, okay. And then uh, coming here in the east, which is about two and a half hours from where we are, uh, March 18th in Somerville, Mass. at the Somerville Theater. Special guest with Cheryl Wheeler, which... Uh, yeah, I'm going to open for Cheryl, which will be a thrill. I'm a big fan of her songwriting. Now, now we kicked off, uh, before we, we, we plugged in for the interview, uh, the opening track to the record, If William Shatner Can, I Can Too, and definitely showcases your humor, but great chops on the vocals and guitar playing. Um, this actually kind of, was it the impetus, the title for, for the record to get you actually putting one together well you got no that kind of came later it was in in front of the first show i did i i go i gotta have an opening song because people are going to come and basically you know wait to see a train wreck and uh i got to deal with that the disclaimer right up front and so i've in in the four years i've always opened my show with you know basically a song that says look i know i'm an actor and i know i'm not known for this and I know you're sitting back judging me with like an 0 and 2 count on me, but you know what? It's, uh, here's a song that deals with it, and it kind of gets that out of the way right off the bat. So have you been keeping up with the uh, the hot stove league with the, with the Tigers? Uh, tigers are a mess, <laughs> and the Lions are worse. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah so I, I'm actually going to do the Tiger Fan Blues at the Purple Rose shows in a couple of weeks, and I've rewritten it to include references to the Lions. But I got to give you credit because I, I I heard you were despite that really big losing season you, you had the Tiger fan hat on regardless Absolutely. right? Absolutely, they're my guys, they're my team. You know, you got to stick with them, and and it's tough, you know, to walk into like a place like New York and watch all these Yankees fans walking around. I'm a, I'm a Met fan, so you don't have to worry. I can't stand the Yankees. Oh well, hey, hello. Right. But I I'm I just. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I wear it. I got. I, we have an apartment in New York, the top floor of a brownstone, and uh, yeah, I've got three tiger caps in there that I wear around the city. Right. So, so why don't we give a listen to uh, that song, which we just spoke about, the lifelong tiger fan blues, and uh, it's from my special guest Jeff Daniels. You can go to jeffdaniels.com to uh, find out all about the record and to support independent musical theater and uh, theater. So we'll uh, come back and speak once again. And that's another track from Jeff Daniels, live and unplugged at the Purple Rose Theater, the lifelong Tiger fan blues. And uh, Jeff Daniels is our special guest here, uh, accomplished actor, producer, playwright, and uh, singer and producer. So i uh, got to give you plaudits for all, all your storied uh, career in you know, film and Broadway. And uh, you, you've got just, you know, we'll touch a little bit on the... On the uh, the acting upcoming, you have RV with uh, Robin Williams, right? That that must is it totally completed? Yeah, well, I mean they're in post production, so they're doing music and looping. But yeah, we're done shooting, and uh, it's a very funny movie, big studio comedy uh, about recreational vehicles. And Robin and his family, basically, the movie is Robin and his family take a recreational vehicle trip, and everything that can possibly go wrong does. And uh, it's it's very funny. It was a thrill to work with him. Now, about how often do you uh, films a year, or does it vary? Uh, it varies. You know, it depends. You know, if, if you're in demand or people want you, then you're. I mean, I'll probably spend six to seven, eight months a year shooting, and then make sure I take the four months off. It you know spread out, but um, you know, I, I I tend not to take movies that you know shoot for a year and a half in Thailand. I think I saw, uh, we were watching the other night on, on one of the channels, your your old buddy Woody Allen, they asked him if something about, uh, you know, how, how much he is into making movies, and he said, well, if it's 6.30 at night and they want to do another shot over and over and the Nick game's at 7, he goes, inevitably, I, he'll go to the Nick game instead of doing the other shot. Oh, it's true. Yeah. And it's a great it's a great lesson. I mean, he when we shot Purple Rose of Cairo, uh, I was on that for Woody. It, that was definitely it. If he had Knicks tickets or the game was on TV that night, we were finished by five. No yeah, problem. Yeah, actually, he was commenting on the Purple Rose with Cairo and yourself during that, so it probably was right around there. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah, and it was great because it's like a you know it's like a human work a day you know it's not one of these 18 to 20 hour days where they just drive you into the ground it's uh woody's got nick's tickets and he's going and uh that's a wrap it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing well you uh you know the the thing about what you've done i'm sure for your family and your wife uh you worked in new york and established a movie career and then you went back home to chelsea michigan well what's it like uh what was actually what was it like at the beginning making that decision to to go back home and still still make a career and do what you love. Well, it all we did, Kathleen and I just we wanted we had one kid, we were going to have more and we both are from Michigan, so it was familiar to us. It was home. And after 10 years in New York, we just moved back to Michigan because it was home and that's where we wanted to be and that's where we wanted to be based and all we did, which is unusual in Hollywood, is all we did is we put family first, career second. It was that simple. Career was a close second, you know, as far as money and supporting a family and all that, but it was second. That meant that we didn't live where the career wanted me to live, which was L.A. We lived where the family would be best off, in our opinion, and uh, I was the one on the airplanes, and that's how we did it, and uh, our kids, I think, are better for it. Now, now, for the musicians out there, what kind of guitar do you bring out on stage and use on the record? I got, uh, well, on the CD, I, I used a uh, 1946 Gibson J45. Um, it just, it's a great sounding guitar, and Gibson, it was actually made in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and so being from Michigan, that was important to me. I've got about 10 of these different guitars. I'm playing, right now, I'm playing a, a 1934 Martin that... Um, it was an arch top, you know, with the F holes, and and they didn't they didn't sound very good back then, and so they stopped making them very quickly. And uh, there's a, a company in Lansing, Michigan, called Elderly Instruments, and the vintage guitar guys out there know where that is and know of it. And and there's a guy named Joe Concoli up there, and he took an old 1934 Martin C2, and he just took the top piece off and replaced it with a 2003 kind of red. Adirondack Spruce, I believe, you know, top piece that, um, you know, Martin generally uses when, when they're making their own guitars. And he basically, you know, he, he basically took a 1934 guitar and put a new top piece on it. So I don't feel so badly about plugging in the hardware and the pickups and all that stuff into it. You know, I don't feel like I'm destroying a, a piece of art. Uh, but it, the sound of it is great, and that's what I've been playing recently. So they got some good music shops out your way? They do. They really do. Uh, Elderly is probably the leader, you know, as far as, I mean, they've got everything, and they're a national, nationally recognized kind of, you know, store. I mean, they're, they're, they 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 got everything, and they're, they're great. I mean, I take all my stuff up there to be fixed. Now, uh, with the success of this uh, independent release CD, uh, the Live and a Plug to benefit the Purple Rose Theater, um, any future plans right now? Or you got stuff in in the Jeff Daniels musical vault to to put out another one, studio uh, release. Well, we've got um, Christine Lavin, who's a big supporter of the CD, uh, asked me to write a song called uh, about food. She's putting out a CD in about six months to a year called um, called uh, One Meatball, which is basically people like me. And, uh, you know, she's very kindly included me with Dave Van Ronk and Tom Paxton and other people uh, writing songs, but it has to be about food. Okay. It's a typical Christine Lavin comedy kind of thing. And so that's the kind of assignment, is to write something about a food, about recipe. And so I wrote this song called Tomato Pudding, which is, you know, this family recipe we've got that we throw out every Thanksgiving. And so I turned it into this kind of, you know, sexual kind of thing that, you know, Christine blushes when I play it. But uh, So I'm going to put that on her CD. We, we've got a live version of it that I did at Joe's Pub in New York, but we also we're going to do a studio version of it that we're almost finished with. That, that should be great. And uh, Jeff Daniels, our special guest, i got to thank you for coming by WVUF in the Upper Room. And our WVUF listeners, if you uh, missed out on this in interview and just checked in, we'll be re-airing it. it in its entirety for three days and four nights at Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com. So we should go out with a couple uh, songs from the CD uh, and make sure fans come out to support you on this tour. And if you're in Chelsea, Michigan, 
10 shows from December 20th through December 31st, jeffdaniels.com. Let's see. We'll, we'll go out with a song which uh, talks about your encounters on, on the movie set with Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry Blues, which, which has got a lot of humor to it. And, uh, of course, a song I, I'm sure means a lot to you, uh, Mama Never Left Her Oldest Boy Alone. Yeah. yeah. Very supportive mom, right? Very much so. And she said something to me that kept me in New York, and it's probably a big reason why I'm still an actor. So thanks, Jeff. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Good time.